So now we're gonna we're gonna hand it off to our artist for tonight leading this workshop. Jamia Weir is a multidisciplinary artist and elementary art teacher in Los Angeles. She received an MA of Art Education from Maryland Institute College of Art in 2014. Her thesis work about arts integration and eco art education was published in um, in the 2016 sorry in 2016 in the National Journal Art of Education. And she was an artist in residence at the Vermont Studio Center in 2017, and was recently an artist in residence at the Historic Burcliff Arts Colony in Woodstock, New York. Thank you so much for being here today. Please feel free to take it away. Thank you so much, Robbie. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me, Ektera. I'm really excited to be here. My name is Jamia, and I am just coming off of a day of school teaching. I teach elementary school art and I'm having to teach with masks, um, which is interesting getting used to that. And uh, it's like, I never thought I would be relieved to come back to Zoom in a way, but I am. So I'm excited to teach you all about making plarn, plastic bag yarn. And it's something that I've incorporated into my own artistic practice and something that I do with my young students uh, regularly. I love using recyclable materials and talking about upcycling and repurposing with them. And it's just exciting to find materials that are free, first of all, but you're also helping the earth. And that's an amazing thing, right? Uh, taking away things that could potentially uh, be going to the trash and the landfill. So, um, all you're gonna need today are plastic bags and scissors really, and we can make some really cool things. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple different methods to making plarn. Um, and I'm gonna share, I have a little overhead shot action here. I'm gonna share that right now. Okay, let's see. Okay, are you seeing, are you seeing that, Robbie? Yes, that's okay. perfect. Okay, great. Okay, so I have some bags over here and I like to use a lot of these like thinner bags and I'm gonna show you another technique for the thicker plastic ones. But what I like to do is I take the bag and I kind of flatten it out and I pull at the corners, I pull at the handles and it's this very rectangular shape and I kind of flatten it back out and then I fold it in half. So the bottom is here, fold it in half, flatten it back out and kind of keep folding it and kind of smushing out the air. And then I cut it with either scissors or I also have this rotary cutter. If some of you guys are sewers, um, you may have this tool with a, a ruler like this can also be handy. And I've done multiple bags this way that's good for doing many at once, um, but I'm gonna show you with the scissors. So you're just gonna cut off the bottom of the bag and I like to use about one inch segments and I just kind of eyeball it. So I cut a bunch of these and I love the found color of the bags and how like certain words will show up at times. So, I got to the handles, so I can kind of put these aside and then the bottom of the bag, I can put these aside. I end up using these sometimes randomly for like stuffing. If I've ever made like sculptures, this could be a, a stuffing or you can be creative with that and use it in some other way. So these, what you have here are these loops, all right? So what you do is you start with one of the loops, take another loop, open it up, and you put one loop inside the other. And I kind of tell my students like a, like a big capital letter T. And what you do is you take one hand, right? And I kind of like get this hand ready because it's gonna grab this side of this loop. And I leave it like on the top of my hand so it can easily slide off my hand because I'm gonna need this hand to grab this and pull. So here we go, I'm gonna pass this one over to this hand and I kind of let it slide off. And then I pull that bottom loop and I pull the two loops apart, away from each other. And then you get this chain, all right? So then I'm gonna do that again and I keep repeating that. So I'm gonna take another loop. I put it inside the, this end of this, this loop and I pass 
off one side of this loop to the other side to the other hand, I grab it, let go. This hand comes over here to the chain and I let go of that and I pull. It makes a knot. So if you keep doing this and you keep doing this, you start to build a really long chain. And then you can kind of twist it onto your finger lightly and then pull it off and then twist it the other way. Keep turning it and make a little ball, which might turn into a big ball. So that is one way to make yarn. Okay, now I'm gonna show you another way in case you know you, this will work with the thicker bags, but yeah, in case you have a lot of those thick bags, this technique might help with those. Okay, I'm gonna put that aside for now. I'm gonna continue that later. So now here's a thicker bag. I'm gonna do the same thing, get it flat and fold it and fold it. I'm gonna cut off the handles. And maybe I will show you this rotary cutter method just in case you wanna check it out. So, so this is my, I love this tool. It's very sharp though. If you do buy one of these and your finger accidentally grazes that, it, it will cut you. So you gotta be careful. Mine's kind of dull at this point, but just a heads up on that. So you push, put a little pressure there. See, it's like kind of dull mine, but I use it a lot but same deal, all right? And you know, if you're doing the method I just showed, um, you, you may wanna make less than one inch strips for these. I have done that because they're so thick. The reason is like this, this type can break really easily. That's why I try to make sure I do at least one inch. The thicker bags, you know, they're thicker, they're stronger. So you could get away with doing a thinner, um, a thinner, loop. Okay, so I'm going to show you another trick, another method. And this also works really well with fabric strips. A weaver taught me this, a weaver named Sarah Haskell from Maine. I met her at the Vermont Studio Center, actually. So for this one, actually, we don't even need the loop. I'm going to cut the loop apart. Okay, so I've got this strip. I'm going to cut another loop apart. Two strips, okay? Now you're going to take the two ends. You're going to put the two ends together, okay? Fold that in half, right? And then you cut a little slit in the middle, right? So now you got the two pieces with the two slits. You put those on top of each other, okay? Now this, this side here, I'm gonna bring the end of it around the back through the other side of these two slits. And then I'm gonna pull. And that woman, Sarah has, I'll describe this as a snake eating its own tail. But see, now that makes a nice strong connection point. And I got this nice long chain going on. So I'll do that again. So I'll take another strip, cut it, put these two together, fold, cut the slit in the middle, being careful not to leave some room there so it doesn't rip apart on you. But whatever side, like I can, I can have this one come around the other side now. So basically just put it on the opposite side. So I'm using the one that's on the back right now. And I'm gonna bring the end to the other side through the two slits, through the hole there and pull, pull, pull. And there we go, see? So that is two ways of making clarn. Um, And I will, if anybody has any questions or anything, I will take questions throughout. I thought what we could do is people could just start to make some for a few minutes, maybe take five minutes and I'm gonna make some more plarn. And then I'm gonna kind of come in and show you guys a couple things that you can do with it. Does that sound good for everyone? So if you brought bags, let's make some plarn together. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add to my chain that I started right here. Um, troubleshooting, if, if it does uh, rip on you, which ha can easily happen, it's, it's, you can just tie it in a knot if, if you're able and just keep going. I'm curious, have you tried this with the compostable bags that they have at grocery stores? They're a little bit softer 
Um, generally they're colored green. Oh yeah, a little are those, bit. Are those yeah. too weak for something like this? Well, in that case, I might make really wide ones. Like instead of doing the inch I talked about and, and mm -hmm. thick bags, you'd go thinner. With those, you could go thicker. Okay. But yeah, the bottom won't be quite the same. It won't have that flat bottom, but mm -hmm. yeah, you can totally use those. And I love the sound that, like I've, it's gotten to just be like a comforting sound to me. I was doing this like free writing challenge, you know, one of those challenges like people offer like a writer that I know. And it was like, she was giving these writing prompts and one was sounds that are comforting to you or something like that. And I, I was thinking about this, especially when I, I, I spent a, a long time crocheting with it at a certain point in my life and the sound of the crochet hook, I have like a thicker crochet hook for this. And it's, to me personally, it was, it became soothing, a soothing sound. <laughs> Oh man, uh, anybody have any questions or need any help? All right, I think, let me know if there's any, any fine guys. Um, so I guess I can just show you guys a few things that I've done with the Plarn. Um, Okay, so one thing that I've done is I call it plastic bag shag and I've made things like this. So this, I actually have this one in a frame, but um, this is just an experiment where I was like taking, I was trying to make a line uh, with one color and just fill it in um, kind of just a simple abstract thing. But basically I took the plarn, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna pop this out, this pops out of the frame. So you can see how it was built. So it was, built upon this, um, it's essentially like a chicken wire structure. So anything like chicken wire, you can, you can use um, the plarn on and I'll show you how to do that. So I think that yeah, I have one other little one. It's right here. So you see this little grid. So basically you do a little knot type thing. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I came up with this because for so many years, my favorite fruit are strawberries. And I collected these for years. And I, I was like, one day I'm gonna come up with a good thing to do with these. And it was the Plarn and I started making these, I call them eco flowers. And I basically used this to, to put the Plarn through. And I'll show you the, the technique and you don't, you don't even need the whole, I just need a strip of the plarn. But basically you cut a length of it and then you, you fold it in half and then you put it through this loop or this little section and then into the other around one of those parts of this little basket cage fence thing. And you, you open this up, this little loop and you grab the end through the loop and pull. And that makes, makes it stay put. And if you just keep adding those, you start to build up and you can, you get a big surface of all this very textured plastic bag yarn. It's, it's pretty cool. And that's where this came into play. Um, so I guess I'll just show you guys I made a little PowerPoint presentation and I'll show you some more of my work. Does that sound like a good time to do that for people? All right, I am going to share. Is there anything in the chat? Okay, all right, let me share my, my PowerPoint and you'll see those eco flowers that I was talking about. Okay. All right, can you see the PowerPoint, Robbie? Yes, so, yes. Okay, cool, cool. So this is my info here. Um, this is something that I did at school with the kids and it was a middle school and I, I had a whole class in upcycling and we, we took Plarn and we put it through this sort of plastic fence thing and wrote the word play on words, recycle. 
and that um, these bottles were like a whole other project that I did in I was doing my thesis work in eco art education and we did this garden installation it's yeah it's a whole it's a whole other story guys but I did write an article about it if you wanted to see it I could let you guys know at the end all right so mind? here's go ahead uh, really quick I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about the inspiration of eco art and and why oh, you got into that Man, oh, um, okay, let's see. Well, yeah, so eco art education, I think, I think what, what sort of started it for me was this elementary school that I work at. And we have something called the Edible Schoolyard, which was started by Alice Waters up in the Berkeley, California area. You know, the chef, she's a chef, she's big in the food industry. And so my school, is a part of that program. We have gardening classes and cooking classes for the kids and they cook lunch on site and it's this beautiful thing. So through the, you know, trying to gain closer access to nature through with my students and also living in a big city, it's like you find yourself trying to draw into nature more. It just was like this natural progression for me in my work. Um, and I, I think I just love the materials themselves. And I love the finding of the materials. Like I kind of came to realize that the actual sourcing of your, your materials is part of the creative process. You know, it's like, you might not have an idea, but once you find something really fun and cool, it, it gives you the idea and it's part of the excitement. Like I, I was telling my students about this within the past couple of days and I was reminded I had this art studio in LA at one point and in the parking lot, I found this old umbrella. It was like this tattered, broken umbrella. And I didn't have an idea before that. I didn't say, I wanna find an umbrella and make this out of it. But because I found that, I got an idea and I made, a big, I made it into this big plastic flower. Um, but yeah, it's just, I, I love that I can do a small part in helping the environment through this type of work. And it's like opening people's eyes and getting them to, to think and rethink the materials that they could use in their own work or, or what they're consuming, what they're throwing away. You know, we talk about the, the word pre-cycling at school, like what you buy, you know, do you really need a 24 pack of plastic bottles or can you just have a water bottle that you you bring and fill up with a water filter you know stuff like that so yeah that's a little bit about um about the progression of eco art ed i also love working with nature itself like i show my students the artwork of andy goldsworthy often so i show them artists who work with you know, materials that could potentially be harmful to nature, but also artists who work with nature itself. Like Andy Goldsworthy is a great example. Like he makes these incredible sculptures out of like rocks and leaves and sticks. It's just mind blowing. So if you guys don't know his work, I would, I would highly recommend it. There's a great documentary called Rivers and Tides uh, featuring his, his work. And it's just like very soothing to watch. But uh, anyways, I think I should, I got these two pieces up here. I wonder if people are curious. Uh, this is this is where I, I sort of began before I was making the plarn. I was fusing the bags together with an iron to create this sort of plastic fabric almost that you could sew with. And that um, actually, I worked at a summer camp out here in LA and I, I first discovered they were doing this at that camp, the camp with the kids, they were ironing the bags. And surprisingly, they were actually having the kids do it inside at that point, which now to me, that seems crazy. Um, but yeah, so I would make these plastic bag portraits, I call them. And um, that this hair is actually made out of bicycle inner tube tires that I, I got from this local bike shop that gets rid of their tires with the holes. And, you know, I'm just constantly on the lookout for things. And then as an art teacher, people give me stuff all the time, like, I got this spring from this eco mattress company in Southern California that gets rid of their discards to, to artists. Um, but some of the plarn is in the hair of this one in particular too, as well as the bicycle tires. So that's why I thought I'd kind of show that as a bridge. But the plarn um, came into play because I was like, I don't know if I should be ironing this. It's it's kind of harmful to breathe in and it's probably even harmful to the environment too. In a sense, like it's like, I'm trying to do something good, but at the same time, it's like, what chemicals is this 
emitting into the atmosphere. So, you know, it's like a double-edged sword, right? You're trying to do good, but it's almost like, yeah, the masks at school. I'm like, it's like, this is good, but it's, you know, it's anyway. Um, so the Plarn crocheting is really, really fun. If you know how to crochet, that is a good thing to do. You get a big, big crochet hook and it, it works really, really well. I crocheted this face that I later turned into an outfit that this model wore for me in, in this art show. I turned that into a dress. This is a cool sun. I was trying to find a better picture of that guys, but I this is what I did end up finding. And it's from my studio and one of my students came to visit. And if you stick a piece of plarn on the end of a drumstick, you can have a good time. It like it makes for the best ribbon dancing. Like if you know any kids, just pop a piece of plarn onto the end of like a cardboard tube and they will have fun with it. This girl actually is like a dancer and she actually has done actual ribbon dancing. So she was like really having fun with it. Anyways, so here's some more. So trashin, trash plus fashion equals trashin, just like Classic bags plus yarn equals plarn. Um, so this is another outfit I did have this model wear in this show I had called Trash Talk that I'll show a couple more pictures of um, later on. Um, this is just all examples of things I've done with plarn so that you guys could get a sense. So macrame, you can do macrame with plarn. Any fiber art processes that you would normally do with yarn or string, you can do with Plarn. Here's just a close up. So this is like an installation I created in this room at Keystone Art Space. Um, I had a show with this artist, Natalie Baxter. Uh, she's a fiber artist. She works with fabrics and she makes, she well, basically she used to make these quilted guns as part of her practice. And she got a lot of kind of notoriety for them and there was one article in particular, she had some negative comments, like people like would write, like they were like feminazi. And so she would take, pull the negative comments and like she made this like quilted word banner that said, said that word and like other things. So we called the show Trash Talk because it was like people were literally talking trash about her and her work and my work was made from trash. So in the other room on the other side, there's a bunch of her quilted word banners and some of my plastic bag portraits that like were really in conversation with each other as they as they would say within art speak <laughs> it was like literally they were talking about each other but it was yeah um so this is this is just just me playing with different different recyclable materials cardboard I would string cardboard like and make that little stuff like that hanging sculptures I had things on the, the ground um, that the students that would, a lot of my students came. I wanted there to be something for children to interact with. So I, I showed the technique I just showed you on the strawberry basket. Um, I had these grids out, this like chicken wire out on, on the floor and the kids came and they would, they would put the plarn in and it would make like grass that would look like it was, you know, going with these flowers that I had around. Coiling, so basketry like those techniques I did this is kind of like a deconstructed coil basket that I made this abstract sculpture with that had really interesting shadows upon the wall and there's a close-up so there's um you can you know I can show you that later there's also a video I can point you to later if you want to make like here's here's a basket made out of plarn uh there's a, there's a cool art ed series that I did. I'll tell you guys about later that if you wanna learn how to do that, let me show it. Pom-poms, those are fun. Um, actually, I ended up giving this piece to that friend of mine, Natalie Baxter, she took this one. But um, this was kind of like my version of a wreath with all plastic bags and repurposed um, plastic tablecloths. And there's a bit of crocheting in there as well. Um, but pom-poms are super fun and I can show you guys how to do that um, after this, if you guys want. Here's those eco flowers I was talking about. So I would take a hanger, like a wire hanger and just kind of bend it at the bottom a bunch of times and stuff it into this jar. 
and it's super strong. So it would hold up the head of this flower, which is like the whole strawberry basket. And this is an installation I did at this yoga studio actually in Highland Park out here, um, right before the pandemic hit. So they let me decorate their window, which was fun. I save things like things like um, anytime you get like produce, you know, those like little wire um, twisty ties, things like that. I'm just always saving things, collecting things uh, for myself to use and even my students potentially. So this is um, what I was starting to talk about before. There's a group out in LA called Ruckus Roots. They're the word artivism they use, I love that. So they're a nonprofit organization and they do a lot with sustainability and educating the youth. And I've worked with them quite a bit. And we did, before I left for my artist residency in Woodstock, they, they shot this little art ed series that we designed together and it's called The Roots of Reuse. So if you're interested in you know, making plarn, there's a plarn video or this coil basket, there's a video where I make this, I show how to do that. And there's some other ones up on YouTube. So you could check that out. <clears throat> There's also my first ever YouTube video up there on how to, which is how to make Plarn. And it's in that old studio that I had at Keystone Art Space. And um, I now I now have my own YouTube channel that I started during pan the pandemic because my, my school wanted us to make videos for the kids at one point. And that channel is called Art Stuff in La La Land. But before I had that channel, I made this as like a one-off YouTube video. So if you wanna find that one, it's pretty cool. Cause I show more, a few more pieces of my work in that video. It's, you would put, type in how to make Plarn and a ton of different Plarn videos will come up. But if you specifically put in eco art, you'll find mine. Um, and there's just my website, my Instagram. I have one Instagram for my personal work and one for my student work. And then Textile Arts LA is just a great overall resource. I'm a member, I love them. Everything they do is just incredible. Um, I would recommend following them on Instagram if you're into the arts, if you're into the fiber arts, textile arts, they're just lovely people. They're always doing cool things. So, um, yeah, that's about all that I have for my PowerPoint. Does anybody have any questions after I, I said a bunch of stuff? <laughs> I just need to take one little. How's everybody doing? Um, does anybody, oh, Vanessa, did you make some plar in there? She's holding up her plar. I did. I don't know how to crochet, but I will. It's something that I want to learn. <laughs> I can show you really quickly if you want how to crochet without a hook, like for a single chain with your fingers. Would you like to see that really quickly? Yeah, that would be cool. Others are so down. This is, all right, I'll do it real quick. I, I was thinking I could do this too. Um, so when I was a kid, my grandmother was always crocheting. She was always on the couch in front of the TV with yarn in her hands. And at that time, I wasn't super interested in crocheting, but I was interested enough. And she did teach me just the single chain. And I remember she started without, I think I, without even a hook. So that's what I'm going to show you real quick. Um, so all you do is you take yarn or string or yarn or whatever, and you kind of just make you, I guess I, I like to call this like a number six of my students, like a number six, right? But you, you grab, you grab and you basically grab through the loop, you grab here, right? So you, you pull it and it makes a little knot. And then you're, you're basically gonna keep your fingers here and you're gonna pull at the longer of the two, not the tail, but you pull at this one and you, you kind of pull this to get you started to help you, but you just pull, you just keep pulling through the hole. And, and then it might be trickier with the plarn at first if you're just starting out, but you just keep pulling it through. And then you kind of shorten it, the hole, so it doesn't get out of control, but you just keep pulling through. Pulling through loops, that's like a lot of, these techniques, it seems like. So that's how to do a single crochet chain um, without a crochet hook. 
Okay, so if you guys want to make a pom pom, this is what I show my students. You take a book or a piece of cardboard, but if you just, most people have a book on hand and whatever size book you have, that's basically the size of your pom pom. So if I've made like cheerleader pom poms before, and of course I'll use like a big book for that. So what you do is you just take, take the plant, um, I'll go this way, and you just keep wrapping, let it slide through your fingers, wrap it around, and then you can always incorporate other colors. Like I made, I had a pink bag, I made some pink plarn, so I can incorporate that, mix colors in, which is fun. And get it to be pretty thick. Just kind of use your judgment. And then you're going to need a piece of string or yarn for this part. So then you would slide it off the book and take this like group of plarn, of plarn loops, center it over a piece of string. And then you're just going to pull it super, super tight and double knot it. Now I've used, to make that other pom-pom I showed you in the beginning, I use a Clover brand pom-pom uh, maker, but I, I like to show people this way in case they don't have that. And then you just cut through these loops. And there's a bunch of them. I like to leave the string kind of long so I could use it for something later, but just kind of find all the loops. And like kind of fluff it out a bit. And then, yeah, just fluff it out. You could give it a little haircut if some are sticking out at random. You could cut it down a lot shorter. It might make it even puffier, but it's just kind of a fun thing to do. You could wrap wire around the center and make, this could become a flower. Um, yeah, that's, I'm wondering, is there anything else anyone wants to see at this point? I'm not sure how we're doing on time. We have about 20 minutes, right? Yeah, Should we, we still have some more time if anyone has any questions or if there's anything else you'd like to show us. Maybe I could ask you guys some questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was curious, um, I, I love your style because you're just kind of finding like whatever you have you know, at your fingertips, right? Like old materials and stuff like that. Um, what, like, what advice do you have for new artists that are trying this at home as well? And I'm sure there's a lot of trial and error as you're discovering these materials and ways to use them. Um, I think that, like I was saying before, finding materials, sourcing your own materials, like whatever interests you, go there like go to that thing, like whether, whether it's re recyclable trash type materials or if it's nature, um, many things can be a loom, like a weaving loom. Like essentially that's what I'm doing with, you know, the strawberry basket, the, the chicken wire, like, you know, you could do this on a fence. Um, I just try to follow what brings me joy. Like, in my art making and in life, which I'm sure many of you guys try to do that as well, especially at a time like this, like we need, we need to, to do that and we need to use our hands. Like working with my hands, it got me through a good part of, you know, the pandemic. Like it, it, it really helped me immensely. Um, I actually started doing more, you might see behind me, this is quilting. I got super into improv style quilting. And so I still, even though I'm working mostly with fabric right now, I'm still trying to repurpose. So um, I have this amazing quilting teacher named Sherry Lynn Wood. And she recently taught a workshop on Zoom and it was called Field of Jeans. And it was all about, you know, using your old jeans or ones you find in like she did an artist residency at the dump actually that's how I connected with Actera um, at this place Recology 
and yeah it was it's just so inspiring using those types of materials but also like people could give you their old clothing and so there's there's further meaning embedded in that in the clothing that you use the fabrics um they hold so much symbolism and meaning and there's like a real beauty in that and i that's why i enjoy it um mm -hmm. Yeah, I know I went off on a little tangent there. But. No, no, thank you. <laughs> that was great. Uh, uh, we me, did get uh, a the, question. The, yeah, oh, uh, <laughs> I was about to say that. Go ahead, Robbie. Okay, so we have a question from Sarah. And Sarah says, just curious to know if these plarn techniques have been used to create a garden trellis. Ooh, that's a really good idea. Um, is that, the trellis is like the over the top, like thing like this, right? Exactly. Yeah, I love that. Um, I I did something sort of on a, it was like on a fence. There's this urban farm in Compton, actually. Um, Moonstone or Moonwater Farm. I should, I'm sorry, I forget which, which one it is. But um, so I'm like a part of all these really cool fiber art communities out here. And there's one called Arts Garage LA with this woman, Cameron Taylor Brown, who's also a weaver. And she gathers art educators together and we do projects. And we went to that farm and we made this, we took the plarn and we did it along this fence. But yeah, you could totally, like these are, you know, they're gonna stand a little up to weather elements a bit. You know, like I also at my school, I should have put a picture of this in the PowerPoint. I, we have this really great, it's a rainbow. There's like this, there was this chain link fence as part as a over a door at our school, like this gate. And I, I had the kids do the, what we did on the, on the we cycle one, we did that at, that was at the middle school campus, but on the elementary campus, I took that same like fencing stuff that I got. I had to, I did end up having to buy that. I bought it at Home Depot, but um, Anyways, I was able to unroll that plastic fencing and I brought it. This was before I didn't even have an art room at school at that point. I would bring it into the classrooms, unroll it and have the kids tie strips of fabric and plarn. We made we made a big rainbow and we put plarn clouds and that rainbow scene on the fence has lasted at my school for years. And it's like a staple at my school. Everybody loves it. And it's it's been mended uh a couple, you know within the past couple years and i made a lesson out of that with the students like you know this has been weathered with time and you know why do you think that is and the, the different elements and nature and wind and sun and you know and we so we have that kind of lesson about it but and the, the whole lesson of like hey instead of just like throwing this out and getting something else to put on the fence or making a whole new one let's just let's just mend it let's work on that and there's so much symbolism in mending. And um, I'm a part of this mending group out here too. So Textile Arts LA, man, they're good. <laughs> Great, thanks for that answer as well. And then we have what looks more like a comment than a question from Rachel. It says, I'm really excited about making a basket and I love the trash talk exhibit concept. Cool, thank you so much for that comment. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're excited. That's that's what I'm in the business for, getting people excited <laughs> about art. <laughs> yeah, I, I, anything I can do to help you guys, like, you know, I tell my students, once I'm your teacher, once you got me, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll be there for you if I can, even though it's one class with you guys. If you need me, you can email me, reach out to me. I would love to help you in your artistic journey. That's what I live for, really, to, to help people along the creative path, so. I hope you guys are enjoying creativity in some way, especially now. We appreciate that. Does anyone have any uh, any more questions? Let's see, I may have missed this. This is from Catherine. I may have missed this at the beginning, but what have you found are good resources for multicolored plastic bags? Hmm, good question. Um, well, I mean, back when there was there forever 21 that comes to mind they're like yellow uh i made i used to make, make more of the faces that i i was talking about with like i did this american girl doll bag but see i'm an art teacher too at an elementary school so you know people give me stuff like 
I probably wouldn't have found that American Girl doll bag, you know, without this elementary school. And then on top of that, I have this one dad at the school who's like, I call him the green teen guru. He's like practically inside the dumpsters, like pulling things out for me. Like he's a major recycler. He gives me all kinds of fun materials to play with. Um, I guess I'm just like on the lookout for the colors, you know, like once you you gear yourself to this type of work, you start to see it in the world. It's almost like if you have a certain kind of car that you're driving, right? Like you might, this be a, might be a new car to you and you might not have noticed it on the road before, but once you're on the road with it, you start to see that car everywhere driving, right? So it's the same thing. Like if I'm using these materials, now my mind is like, oh, I'm on the lookout, you know? Yeah, You'll, you can find things. I, you want to see one of my favorite bags? This is from, this is from France. I saved this. I just think it's so beautiful. Here, let me do. So I've saved bags like for years. That's, you know, there's some really beautiful bags in the world. Um, this one, I almost want to iron and make it thicker and then just like not even really do much to it. Um, these bags were saved by my, a woman in my family. She, she gave me these, these are her newspaper in Connecticut. I'm from Connecticut originally. So her newspaper came in these bags. She knows I do this work, right? So she starts saving them. That's the thing. If people catch, you know, wind that you are wanting these things, they'll start saving them for you. Or you put out a call you know, in, in different communities that you're a part of or your Instagram account. You know, I know this other art teacher who put out a call on her Instagram for jeans. I just put out a call within the teachers, the email list that I, you know, the teacher friends I have. So they gave me a bunch of jeans that I'm, I'm working on a project right now with. Yeah, you just put the word out. You'll find stuff for sure. Great, thank you for sharing. Um, Dean's asking about a recording of this video. So this uh, this event was recorded and we will share a copy of that in the follow-up email along with the resources that have been shared earlier. Uh, before basket I forgot to show you guys. This, this was just like an experiment with um, the coiling, but it was, this one has yarn. So it's rope. The core of this is, is rope, um, but you can also use the core for this could be an actual plastic bag. So the whole thing, like this one, I wanted to show a better shot of this. This one is all plastic bags. So this is That's a amazing. good um, video with the roots of reuse. And I can drop a link to that actually in the chat, if that would help. Please, thank you. Mm -hmm. And do you have any big art projects coming up with Plarn? Like, are you doing anything you've never done before with this? Um, let me think for a second. Um, sorry, I'm just dropping that into the chat before I forget. Um, man, well, we just we just mended the rainbow with some recent fresh clouds at school. Um, I don't know. For my own personal artwork, I actually have been thinking about going back to the the melt the fused plastic bags because I saved like all my little plastic bits and there's all these beautiful colors and I used to make jewelry and sell jewelry I would I would make like guitar pick jewelry and stuff like that years ago and thinking about going back and making some jewelry out of those plastic bag bits and maybe putting that up on my Etsy um, I recently partnered with a couple LA fashion companies and I got a lot of their scraps and discards and I've been making these like crochet necklaces out of the old their their binding tapes that they are just getting rid of um so I'm gonna put those up on there as well pretty soon that's kind of some things that I'm I'm working on yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to keep my hands busy so that my mind can rest you know it's like crazy times. Absolutely. <laughs> Does anyone have any last minute questions for the teacher today?
going once, going twice. Did anybody get to do it? I hope people, yeah. Well, if you don't, we have if a you quiet can, group. Okay. <laughs> in the future, maybe you will. And um, kids would love this as well. So if you have kids in your lives that, you know, I, that like art, this is a fun thing to do with them. And the pom pom thing, cheerleader pom poms, that's a fun thing. I think we got, all need some cheer. <laughs> You know, Tara said she, she made uh, some using a Sprouts bag. Nice. That's great. Oh, good. Some comments coming in. The garden trellis. That's so cool. Yeah. And there's that, the video we have this, this is going to be on video. Where are we going to put this? this video? Um, so typically we upload this to YouTube and then we'll send a link to everyone that registered for the event. Cool. Great, Jamie. Well, thank you so much for your time tonight. We really appreciate it. This was very inspiring and it was okay. great to see a, a new form of art I've never been exposed to before. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you guys so much for having me and thanks to everyone that came. I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, thank you. I'm seeing the applause. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Robbie, Carlos, Fiona, um, Actera. This is, it's really cool to make connections with people in different parts of the world through Zoom. And I'm just really happy to have, have been here tonight with you guys. So thanks again.